Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas is just days away, and I do really want to wish you a very blessed Christmas and a prosperous and happy new year as we proclaim the gospel and we advance his kingdom. You know, recently my wife asked me, she said, what do you want for Christmas? And it's a great question. Maybe right now you're saying, yeah, you know, last minute gift ideas. What do I do? I'm still stuck and I got to rush out or call Amazon, you know, and I got to get on. You know what she asked me and I thought about it. I said, well, you know what? I, I really don't need anything. That may sound funny, but I, I said that I don't, and I don't want you to rush out and well, just go get a Chia Pet or the Beach Boys, uh, their greatest hits or some cheese, uh, you know, fruitcake, which I don't like, <laughs> or, uh, you know, maybe uh, Mike Lindell's uh, My Pillow, the latest edition. I love Mike, but I, I don't need anything. But then I responded. I said, you know what I do need? And they're intangibles. And I gave three. I said, prayer and understanding and encouragement. And I meant that. And as I walked away, I began to think, you know, if I could give Donald Trump three gifts, and I want to submit this to you, what would you give him? What can we give? You know, in the book of Acts, there's a quote, actually the words of Jesus. It says, it's more blessed to give than receive. Now, we love to receive, but it's more blessed when we can give. So can we set our hearts and make a, a, a quality decision? Just ponder this. What would we give Donald Trump? Well, I'm going to offer you three things. Number one, and I want to say this as well. If you want to have a stress-free Christmas season, reduce stress, and really enjoy a peaceful time with your family, I want to encourage you, check out the article. Just Google the article I did on how 10 ways I gave 10 tips how to reduce stress and have a peaceful Christmas time. All right, what would be three gifts? Well, the first one I would say is this. Prayer. Prayer. You know, I remember being in New York with over a thousand leaders. It was about seven years ago, and I was so honored to be invited. And um, I, I remember I was just kind of amazed. I looked to my left. There was Franklin Graham. He was just feet away. And Dr. Job Dobson was right there with Shirley, his wife, and Eric Metaxas, and all these major leaders. And we were all there, and I was honored to be there, but we were listening. Why is Donald Trump running for president? And I'll never forget, Mike Huckabee was interviewing him, and Donald Trump said, you know, I was watching TV, and I was thinking for years, our country's declining, what's happening to us, the trajectory is really serious, bad. And he said, then his wife, Melania, walked in the room and said, hey, Donald, you know what? You ought to think about running for president. And he said, I ran and I run because I love this country. It's given me so many opportunities and I see it going down in many ways and I, I don't like the decline and I want to do what I can. I want to make a contribution to help restore the greatness of America. Well, it all starts, I believe, with prayer. And the Bible would tell us that the first thing we should do for those who are in positions of authority is to pray. First Timothy 2, familiar passage. First of all, it says, prayers supplications, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men. But then it stresses. Where do we start? It says those who are in positions of authority. Why? So that we can live a peaceable life in all, you know, uh, honor and, 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 and be able to uh, have an opportunity to share the gospel. Why? Because God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So when we cultivate a society where there's liberty and freedom, then we can really be prosperous in sharing the gospel. And that's what we want to do. So we have to start with prayer for our leaders. And I believe that's what we need to do. We need to pray. Mr. Trump is at a pivotal time. There's a lot of people. They're saying, you know what? He's lost momentum. Should he run again? Well, he has declared he's going to run again. But he needs wisdom and he needs protection. I pray every day for Mr. Trump and I pray for Mr. Biden. You say, do you pray for Mr. Biden to be a success with his policies in governing? Uh, no, I pray for his safety and protection because I don't agree. I believe from a biblical worldview, he really has done much damage to this nation. And when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, the Bible says. But when the wicked rule, the people, you know, they groan. There's lots of groaning in this land. And I believe we need to pray for those in authority. That's the first thing I think we should offer to Mr. Trump. Will you join me in that? I'm a member of Intercessors for America for about 47, 48 years. 
This coming year, we'll celebrate our 50th anniversary. And this is what we're all about. We're passionate to equip and motivate and inspire people. Give them the news and then pray and get engaged. What's the second gift that we can offer Mr. Trump? Well, I believe it's this. I believe that we should offer him understanding. Understanding. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I sat down with my wife uh, just the other day and she said, you know what, I want to talk about some things. And we ended up talking for, I believe it was probably 90 minutes. She was sharing her heart. I was responding. And as a husband, First Peter tells us, it tells us, husbands, dwell with your wives in an understanding way. And then it says, for they're the weaker vessel, but we're joint heirs of the grace of life, so your prayers will not be hindered. Now, people think, well, understanding way means you know your role. Well, I'm to be the, you know, head of the household as a servant and the provider, etc. But how about in an understanding way being, I understand her basic needs and how I can serve her as Christ. That's what it is, the model of Christ and the church. That's what marriage is a symbol of. And so we need to dwell, I believe, in understanding. And I want to invite you to understand where Mr. Trump is at. You don't have to agree, but he is really a man of core convictions. And he has two things that are very dear to him. And he asks people to understand. One, he is of the conviction that the last election was lost because of fraudulent activity. He asks for your understanding. You can disagree. People say, it's a big lie. Oh, you know, we repress that. We don't want anyone to hear that. But that's what he cries out for. And then number two, he believes that there needs to be a redressing of his grievances. And I would say to him, Mr. Trump, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I've been betrayed. I've been blackmailed. I've gone through things with people. And, you know, I ask, hey, wait a minute. Can I have a say? Can I speak up on this thing? And that's what he asked for. You know, recently on his um, uh, platform, he shared his heart. And I want to read, this is what he's asking for. And can we grant him this understanding, whether or not you totally agree? Look at what he said. I love these words. This was his plea. He said this. And these are, I believe, core convictions from the heart of Donald Trump. With the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception in working closely with big tech companies, the DNC, and the Democrat Party, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner? Or do you have a new election? He's asking this, please understand my position. A massive fraud, he believes, of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent activity. I grant Mr. Trump understanding in where he's coming from. And with uh, Elon Musk now, with Twitter, more revelations are coming, how things were repressed, banned, blocked. And so he has a case. But you know what his one recourse is? He only has one path, and that is assemble the team of lawyers and legal experts, compile all the hard evidence documented, and then make his case before the Supreme Court. That's the one path he's got. But in the meantime, we pray for the man, and we should also, I believe, grant understanding. Number three, you say, what else? Well, I would say this gift. I believe he needs encouragement. Encouragement. You know, when Joshua took over four times, the Lord said, be strong and of good courage, good courage, courage, courage. And you know what? He needs encouragement. And I'm going to say something as a statement. I don't know if you'll ever see or read or hear parts from this commentary, but maybe this will express your heart. And recently, Time Magazine said, well, here's our person of the year, Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president who for almost a year has fought against the Russian invasion against the attempts to assassinate him and decapitate his government. But they said he needs the tribute, the honor, and the encouragement. And so they put him as the person of the year globally. Well, I believe in a similar manner, Mr. Trump needs encouragement like this. I can't imagine how he has maintained, apart from the prayers of God's people and his own crying out to God in secret, amidst all the bombardment that he faces. Now, I want to read something, and let's read it together. Mr. Trump, I don't know if you'll read this commentary, but I pray you do as I offer you my gift of encouragement with others to what? 
persevere, just like Mr. Zelensky in the Ukraine. On June 15, 2016, you descended on an escalator trip that changed America and catapulted you into the nonstop attacks that you have, that you have, you know, that have crushed you daily, almost overwhelming majority of people on the planet. That's what they would have done. And yet at the time you were like lightning in a bottle. And I thank you for persevering to champion America as a world leader once again. Now lots has changed in America and you said you'll run in 2024. What you accomplish while in office are among some of the greatest for a first term president in US history. Running on your record contrasted with the disastrous free fall we've all suffered with an incompetent and incapacitated Joe Biden should be a no contest, but malevolent forces are at work in our nation to what? promote division and extremist views of secularists, globalists, and Marxists. These progressives have a radical agenda to transform America from free market capitalism to European socialism with ever increasing government control. It's time to wake up. Billy Graham called socialism the religion of Satan. Masses of Americans, what? Are what? They're clueless as to what's happening. And they're not perceptive. They don't see what's going on. And so they don't see how bad things really have to get before we wake up from, from what? Complacency and cowardice to see a turnaround and desperately needed spiritual awakening. President Trump, are you supposed to again be integral in the earnestly prayed for revival and reclaiming of our gospel-centered heritage? With all your legal entanglements, uh, expected indictments, hostile uh, opposition from so many sides. And it's true, coupled with your grenade, th you know, throwing tendencies and at times unstatesmanlike behavior, let's be honest, which I encourage you to temper, some are asking if it's time to explore other possibilities for someone other than yourself to represent traditional conservatives. I say this, Mr. Trump, humbly, Humble yourself to ask God's guidance and be more accountable to godly leaders you trust and who can help you. Now we look and we say, hey, the new year's coming. Let's sing old Lang Syne and, you know, let's get together and smile and pretend everything's going to be better. I'll tell you, when you look at the reports, you study what's happening. I wish I could say that, but barring divine intervention, things are only going to get worse, folks. We've got to be ready for this. The economy, inflation, the, in stock, the stock market, the border, the Senate recently, how could they have done this past what I call the Disrespect for Marriage Act, redefining in a sense what marriage is. I mean, we see our country and the trajectory. We need an awakening like we've had in the 1700s and the 1800s with the Jesus movement, the charismatic movement. We need revival and reformation in this land, but it begins when we humble ourselves when we repent and we have national repentance. Pornography, abortion, go on down the line. We can't ignore in 2 Chronicles 7.14, God's promise to heal the land. And we love to claim it. But remember, it says we have to turn from our wicked ways, our sin. So as we close out this year and begin a new year, can you join with me? Can we offer, in a sense, prayers for Mr. Trump, whatever the future God has for him, can you grant him understanding in what he's crying out for? And then also, lastly, can you join with me in encouragement? And your prayers will provide that. There is hope for America. God wants to bless this land as he has, but we've turned away from him. We've rejected him, his word. We've blasphemed him. And it's time for a turnaround. And it begins with the church. And it begins with you and me. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy New Year. And let's move forward. And I say this, don't get scared, get serious, and we're not gonna surrender.